Hi everybody, it's Paul Harris with Global Recruiters of Blackhawk here in sunny California. How are you doing? I hope you're doing well. As you may know, I run an executive search firm that specializes in the telecom infrastructure space and everything that goes along with that. And last week I was at a great trade show in Southern California called Wireless West. And if you were not able to make it, I want to make sure you feel like you were there. I'm going to try to give you just the, the high points from my perspective. So what was it? So the Wireless West is basically the um, wireless state associations in the West region. So California Wireless Association, Arizona, Nevada, Colorado, um, Northwest, etc. And they did, uh, I mean, I go to a lot of trade shows and you guys, this was at least as good as any that I've been to in terms of communication, organization, content, speakers, networking, fun, etc. It was a really, really uh, fun event and very, very informative. So I'm going to try to go real quickly and kind of tell you the high points from, from my perspective. So um, the the uh, keynote speaker was Mark Ganzi. I'm going to give you his speech in just a little bit. Um, the, the bottom line in terms of just not only the speakers and the networking sessions, etc., the big picture is that we're all drinking from a fire hose, as you know, right? There's a lot of spending. All, all four wireless carriers are spending, and it's just a great and kind of crazy time to be in the, in the business. So uh, the first uh, night started with a rooftop networking event sponsored by MD7. And uh, that was a lot of great networking, great, great to see a lot of people I haven't seen in a little while. Uh, the next day started off with Jeff Lewis. So Jeff Lewis is the, uh, from Verticom, right, former um, president of the Texas Wireless Association. And his uh, speech was called The Trend on Spend and the Real, Real Five Use Cases. So uh, basically talked about why we're all drinking from a fire hose. Number one, obviously the race to 5G is on. Number two, FirstNet is blowing and going. And number three, tax reform is kind of encouraging everybody to spend some money. Uh, CapEx spending is up 10%, so the uh, expectations for this year would be AT&T wireless, AT wireless, 25 billion in spend, Verizon 17.6, and then eight, um, Sprint and T-Mobile probably in the 5.5 billion range. I talked about the use cases that are kind of making this uh, everything blow and go right now. So obviously, um, IoT, autonomous vehicles, smart home, gaming, including AI, AR, VR, smart energy, tele telehealth, smart cities. And we talked a lot about the, uh, the how fi uh, clarity is needed in the 5G world. So it will come from standards and timelines, etc. He had a panel, uh, so um, Jeff did, and then on the panel was Greg Spraits from Exonet, Dan Schweitzer from Crown, Holly Maldonado from T-Mobile, Kishore Raja from Boingo, and they talked a lot about fiber being the key to small cell deployments, which we know, and they are estimating that 100,000 um, small cells will be deployed minimum per year. And you've heard a lot about, I've read a lot about CBRS lately, so how CBRS uh, opened up to uh, the public via spectrum sharing. Uh, and the key, key, they talked about the key to easier and quicker deployments would be the partnerships or the partnership between the carrier, the OEM, the vendor, the municipality, the jurisdictions, and the building owners. They talked a lot about uh, the attachment fees and the permitting fees and one on how you can have this incredible range, right? So, you know, one will be a fee of $200 in this, uh, in this city, in this market, and it'll be a, the same thing will be $3,000 in this city, in this market. So a lot of call for standardization. Great, uh, great job done by, uh, by Jeff and his team there. Um, the other one I went to was a, it's called Operational Best Practices, right? We all want to make sure that we can get some best practices. So the moderator for this was Lisa White from West Tech. On the panel was Ryan, Shield, uh, Ryan Shields from Synergy, um, purchased recently by Advantage Engineers. Chad Tuttle from B&T Group, Paul Vernesh from Stealth, and Martin Hevesy from Exonet. So they're talking about best practices such as uh, Martin was talking about them having a mix of employees and a mix of contractors that you can kind of bring on and kind of then let go as, as a, the ebb and flow happens. Uh, and then obviously having multiple vendors. Chad talked about, uh, said, you know, diversity of your customer base is, is key and then also partnering with competitors. And he highlighted uh, uh, doing a good job of forecasting with carriers, which kind of got a laugh from the crowd because we know it's not that easy to, to uh, do forecasting with the carriers. Talked about a best practice of retaining employees, uh, things like setting metrics up front so there's no surprises when it comes to uh, performance evaluation time. Uh, Lisa talked about you know, making, uh, you know, making it known that you appreciate them. 
Uh, Chad said just kind of open communication with your employees, which I know he is great at. And then Paul said, you know, do things to make things uh, feel like a family. That's a retention. So those are the operational best practices. The next one was huge, you guys. This is obviously wherever I go, uh, PCIA, WIA, any of these um, type of trade shows, the tower hour, right? So these are all the tower guys that get up there and talk about what's going on in the tower world. And this was as, as interesting as it always is. So it was led by Tom Engel, who's uh, with Strategic uh, Tower Advisors. He's a, uh, was the moderator. On the panel was Bob Page from Vertical Bridge, uh, Ron Bizick from Tarpon Towers, Clayton Frunk from MVP Capital, Tarmod uh, Larson, who's the CTO from Exonet, and then Tony Peduto, the CEO of CTI Towers. Just that morning, it hit in the newspaper, you know, not the newspaper, but, you know, everything that we read about a possible, uh, you know, the T-Mobile Sprint merger, is it back on type of stuff. So we talked a lot about that. Um, Bob Page said, you know, different uh, different day, same story. In other words, I don't, he's thinking, nah, that's not going to happen. Uh, Tony said, well, hey, if it does happen, you know, then we're going to go from this interesting scenario from all four wireless carriers spending simultaneously to maybe only two, AT&T and Verizon. Uh, Ron Bizick talked about, uh, you know, the possibilities of a fifth carrier, so, you know, addition networks or something like that, and he just said, you know, you know probably not going to happen anytime soon. Clayton talked about uh, the 5G is still probably 2020s, mostly nebulous, a lot of a lot of marketing, what is 5G, etc. And they talked about the, you know, the standards are still needed. Ron talked about more spectrum, spectrum is needed for 5G. And then Bob talked about, we've all heard about this, uh, this quote, right? 275 billion is going to cost to, to deploy 5G. And he said, well, hold on, we need to make sure, you know, before that money is actually going to come, we're going to have to see some business cases that are going to make these people want to actually spend this type of money. And I, I would agree with that. Talked about a lot of uh, amendment and application uh, activity in the rural areas. Cl uh, Clayton talked about, you know, and this is his world, he would know, right, that the uh, tower multiples are an all are all time high, and Bob said, you know, they're overvalued. Uh, Tom talked about the fact that there's a hundred buyers on the, you know, on the tower buying list, but actually there's only about a, you know a handful of them that actually show up and actually bid on this type type of stuff. There was talk about, you know, you heard me talk about this in the past, about the Tier 1 wireless carriers and the Tier 1 tower companies kind of uh, butting heads and the Tier 1 wireless carriers are saying, hey, you guys need to, you know, lower your prices and et cetera. And what they were, these guys were basically saying was, you know, now with um, FirstNet out there, there's just no leverage that the, you know, the tower companies still have all the leverage. So the, the lowering their prices is probably not going to happen. Ron said, hey, you know, we want to be easy to get along with. We really do. But it probably makes more sense to kind of keep the existing contracts that we have in place, but maybe change stuff moving forward just to kind of, you know, show good faith and be easy to get along with. Uh, Clayton talked. To everyone was more, um, everyone was talking about uh, Tillman infrastructure. Clayton's uh, quote on them was, you know, they say they're going to be, you know, the rumor has it they're going to be doing thousands and thousands of towers. And he uh, respectfully said, you know, I don't think it's going to be that much. So we'll see what happens there. And that most applications uh, have coming becoming lately from Sprint. And, you know, so the next, uh, over the next month, that'll all become clear as whether the T-Mobile Sprint merger happens, and, uh, happens or not. Two more real quickly, you guys. So uh, one of the keynote speakers were, the, were folks from the LA Rams, right? We we're in uh, we we're at a place called LA Live in Southern California, right by Staples Center. And so Kevin Demoff, the COO and EVP of uh, football operations for the Los Angeles Rams was there along with uh, Scarpy Hedinson, who the CTO. And basically they're building a new Ram stadium, including a 300 acre sports and entertainment facility. So there's a lot of talk about the uh, techno, uh, technology infrastructure that kind of goes into making a, a project like that happen. Very, very easy, uh, very, very um, interesting. Last but not least, uh, Mark Ganzi. He was supposed to speak on the uh, first day keynote speak. He couldn't make it, so he showed up the next day. A little extra effort from him, so good job. Uh, he talked a little bit about Vertical Bridge and where they're at, right? They've raised $10 billion, and they did, uh, did 150, act 150 acquisitions, and they've got $300 million in cash flow, so slightly successful company. He talked about the business of the, you know, the tower business being such a fantastic business, right? right? Long-term long uh, yields that are so stable, uh, they've got you've got the capital appreciation and then you've got grade a uh, customers you know your tenants so it's, it makes it easy to borrow money when your you know, customers are AT&T, Verizon, Sprint, T-Mobile etc. 
Uh, he talked about the verticals in his world being towers, small cell, fiber, and data center. He did a lot of talk about data centers and mentioned, mentioning a company that you've probably heard of. If you haven't, you need to uh, check them out, NVIDIA, so the letter N and then NVIDIA. Um, talked about the hyperscale as the fastest growing segment in, the da in data centers. And data centers, are you ready for this? You might want to write this down. Data centers are where towers were 10 years ago. I mean, I went right, I right outside and called my uh, stockbroker after I heard, heard him say that. So obviously some money to be made with that, however. Um, you talked about the five-year CAGR, right? CAGR, so the compound, compound and annual growth rate. So the fi fiber is 4.9, towers are 6.4, and data centers are 10%. So a lot of stuff going in, in, the, in the data center world. Talked about the total market cap for the mobile and uh, internet infrastructure world is three three hundred fifty billion dollars. So there's a lot of stuff going on in our world right now. He showed a chart about mobile data growth in different uh, countries. Um, from 2016 to 20, 2021, USA is expected to have 47% growth, where the Middle East is 96%. So we're actually near the bottom of that, if I remember correctly. There's a lot of growth going on over the world, all over the world. He said 5G will be a long bill, right? It's not going to happen overnight. And that 5G will mostly be machine to machine, right? So in other words, a whole bunch of 5G is a bunch of stuff going on in the background that we're not actually driving it on a day-to-day -day ba basis with this machine to machine, all this communication, but we're not actually going to be involved with driving it. Once again, the key is fiber, data centers, and SDN. He talked about the rate, rate of change in our business. And I, if you saw my uh, thing I did last week on the IoT convention that I did here in the Santa Clara, uh, Santa, Silicon Valley in the Santa Clara Convention Center, they talked a lot about a rate, rate of change. And he said 90% uh, of the world's data has been uh, created in the last 18 months. So just absolutely crazy. He said that everything is pushing closer, uh, pushing to the edge, which is closer to the, to the customer, like in the suburb, suburban areas, and how they can put a, you know, um, you know, uh, an enclosure with 20 to 40 different racks uh, at the bottom of a tower in the suburbs, but not in the city. So it, it, it causes some uh, interesting, uh, you know, delineation between the, the suburban and the urban areas. I uh, said small cell growth is going to absolutely be huge, and we're only in the first inning of a nine-inning baseball game, right? 5G is only in the, fir 5G's in the first inning, and 1.2 million nodes will be built over the next eight years. And he ended with a quote, which made me think, and that is, think bigger, right? In other words, if you are just, you know, thinking it's going to go like this, you need to think it's going to go like this and then gear your business up to get ready to handle that. So anyway, you guys, great, great uh, show. A lot of the people right in the wireless infrastructure space. So it was really, really good to see everybody. And next for me is uh, more IoT stuff and uh, smart city stuff and then wireless infrastructure association after that in uh, in may so that's it you guys thank you so much for listening i hope you were able to i hope i was able to make you feel like you were there okay you guys thanks again bye-bye